Hello, everybody. It's good to be here. and look forward to working with you and help you in any way I can. I'll just open it up for, for questions. What made, what made you decide to come back? What, what about it? This My job? wife. Your wife. <laughs> what, did she, what did she say? She said she married me for worse, better or worse, but not for lunch. So three years with me, she said, you need to go back to coaching. And I've enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I, I was out for three years, and I had never met Coach Flood. Um, he called me the year before, and I was interested then. But my uh, oldest daughter got married, so I said, unless you have an open date on October 5th, I don't think I can do it because I got too much money sunk into this wedding. So, you know, he, he, he called me again. I guess it was uh, late January, I think, wasn't it, Coach? And he asked me if I was interested. It was on a leave of Friday night. And I said I, I might be, and he said, why don't you get on a plane and come up? And uh, I really enjoyed meeting him. I liked him a lot. I think he was a very straight shooter, very honest person. Um, I was uh, really taken back by the facilities here. I didn't know anyone on the staff, uh, so that's usually an unusual thing. But uh, I've enjo enjoyed my time here. I've enjoyed coaching the kids. I've enjoyed wa working for Coach Flood, and it's been a good experience. Ralph, Ryan Dunleavy from Asbury Park Press. Could you just talk a little bit about your work with Gary so far? He's been obviously praiseworthy of something you did with his back foot and changing his mechanics a little bit to get a better zip on the ball. It, it really wasn't a big deal. I mean, when I was watching him throw it, you know, obviously I came into this situation. I, I didn't even know what the depth or, uh, of Rutgers football team was, what they had. I, and uh, I, when I watched the film, I noticed he threw up on his toes. Then they told me he had arm trouble. And when I watched him in, in spring practice, I said, you know, when I was in the NFL, the, the, the big thing that everybody stressed was to put your whole heel in the ground, very much like a pitcher, and, and push you off your back foot. And now what you're doing is you're getting your legs and your hips into your throw. And once he did that, I think it took a lot of the stress off his arm, but I think it also made his arm a lot stronger because he was throwing all arm before. So... Um, you know, I, I don't know why anybody, nobody else recognized that. It was just something I saw. You know. Ralph, I, I guess with Gary, and you started seeing him probably in February, what are the biggest changes you've seen from then to now in working with him? Um, you know, from what people have told me, you know, he, he would lose focus from time to time. I see that a little bit. Um, but he's usually pretty focused. He, he doesn't say a lot in meetings. He takes a lot of notes in meetings. You know, I, I, I've had quarterbacks, that, and I encourage them all to, to either take notes on their iPad or to write them down. He writes all his notes down. Um, he has been very focused with me. I have had no problems with him. I think he has a, a very good football intellect. He sees things. He learns very fast. Uh, he has very good vision. And what... What gets Gary into trouble sometimes is he's so confident that what he can do, he, he lets his confidence override sometimes his decisions. And he'll force, force the ball in there. Now, you know, a lot of times he wins on those forces too, and everybody thinks it's a great throw. But when he loses, then it's an interception. That's what we want to cut down, the interceptions, and make good decisions and not just look for people. That's my job, to get the ball to people that – can do something with it, at least try to do that anyway. Sometimes you can't always do that because the defense will take it away. But um, I've been very impressed with the kid. I, I think he uh, has a chance to be a really good quarterback. Ralph Matalat, Rivals.com. Um, you say Gary has a chance to be you know, a pretty good quarterback or a really good quarterback. How far along in that process is he? And what, at what point do you think you can kind of assess how far he will get, go along in that process? Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the whole team. You know, it's not just Gary. I think, I think Gary can only do what he's capable of doing. He needs protection. He needs people that run good routes and get open. He needs to make the right reads. That's what he does. If we get all those things working, I think, I think that'll happen. But uh, 
you know, he got hit a lot last year. And I think that affected things too. But we're working very hard to see that we throw the ball quicker and, and, and do a better job with our pass protection. And hopefully that we can get him on track. Ralph Leskin talked about your relationship with Gary. How have you been able to build such a relationship with him so quickly? Uh, you know, I just a pretty straight shooter, you know. I like having fun in my meetings. Um, I went about three months and no one laughed at my jokes. So I really kind of thought I lost it. Then one day there was a power surge and I, like the lights went out. And I said, oh my God, am I having a seizure? That cracked them up, so I don't know. <laughs> Since then, they've been, they've been pretty, they laugh at a lot of my jokes now. So the meetings are, are really good. I, I think you need to have fun, you know, and uh, um, it's, it's a good room I have. I, you know, I can poke fun at them and they can poke fun at me and, and it's, it's done with respect and, uh, and we're still learning football. So, you know, when you meet, with, you know, we meet, with, with them probably three hours a day. So um, you're, you're with them, you know, all the time. And it can be a grind if you don't lighten it up a little bit. Coach, uh, Jason Kahn from News 12. Um, does, okay, there over here, yeah. Does Gary, I thought you were a ventriloquist. I was looking <laughs> over here. Does Gary compare to any quarterbacks you've coached in the past? Um, the, the thing that Gary has in common with them is his vision. Um, when I say vision, there's a lot of quarterbacks that will look at receivers to make their decision. And I'm of the belief you have to look at defenders to make your decision. Gary can see defenders. A lot of guys don't. It becomes a blur out there until they learn to settle down. And, uh, you know, the, the, the really good quarterbacks I've had have had that. Uh, Joe Hamilton, who I'm very proud of as being inducted into the National Collegiate Hall of Fame this year, he was 5'9", if that, but could see. You know, I've had 6'5 guys in the NFL that couldn't see. I don't think that's taught. I think that's God-given. Gary, I think, has that. So, you know, it's really, uh, it's, it's really up to all of us, myself, team, the offensive team, the offensive players, to play well so he can use that talent. Do you think he needs some of your help to deal with some of the pressure that kind of surrounds him on a daily basis of being the starting quarterback? Well, that comes with the territory. I mean, I've had guys that had trouble handling that. Um, you know, the way I look at it, you only can do what you can do. If you're given your best and you, you know, that's all you can expect out of anybody. That's all you can expect out of myself or any of our players. They're going to have good days and they're going to have bad days, just like you probably do. So, but dealing with the pressure, to me, the only pressure they should have is on themselves to perform well. That's all I worry about. I don't worry about anything else. If I can look myself in the mirror and know I prepared and do all I possibly could to do a good job, what anybody says about me or what anybody feels about me, that, that's irrelevant to me. I just, I, in my heart, I know what, what I've done and what i got to do better. So I'm my biggest critic. Coach uh, Patrick for JCTV. Uh, you've been around football a long time and as long a coordinator. Time. Is there anything about understanding this team and applying the years that you know about offense to this team that makes this team better or different to make it successful? Well, we really don't know that yet. You know, we're, we're in, this is going to be a, our 11th, practice coming up. I will tell you this, we have made a tremendous amount of improvement since spring practice. Um, I'm amazed at some of the kids uh, where they were in spring practice and, I, and, I, and where they are now. Now, we're going to find out if that's good enough. But uh, until we play some other people, then I think we'll get a feeling of where we're at and what we got to do. And, you know, Every team at this time, every team in the country, unless you're, you know, one of the elite, you know, have, have people banged up and injuries and whatnot. Um, so it's how you come out of camp. And I think how, what kind of start you get off to the season. And then to me, when I was a head coach, my teams always kind of got better. We, we usually started slow and we got better. So 
I don't know how it's going to be when I'm an assistant coach. I hope we get off to a good start. But, you know, we've got to just keep working every day and try to get better every day, no matter what. Whatever we win or lose the first game, that's over. We're working on the second game. We take them one game at a time and see where we are at the end of the season. Ralph, you've got a pretty good stable of running backs. Um, other than, I guess, how important is it to capitalize on the talent you have back there? And other than the obvious of dividing up carries, what can you do to make sure each guy's, you know, maximizes their ability? Well, I think you know our top three guys. I think you can roll them in and out. Myself, um, I think they're pretty good players. Um, you know, I'm I'm doing I'm thinking about doing some things to, to get them on the field. Uh, I think we have some skilled people that are good players also, and um, so I'm trying to incorporate all that. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do because you'll put it in the paper. You have to you have to tune in and watch the game and see if talk about it after the game. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try to use the talents that we have to our utmost. Yeah. Ralph, yeah. what do you see out of your receiver core and the depth there? Um, we, you know, we got this transfer kid, uh, Andrew uh, Tercelli from Kansas. I think he will help us. Um, he, he has a rangy kid. He's probably 6'3", better, runs pretty good. You know, I think uh, Janarian Grant is an explosive player. Um, he, he's a guy that has really improved catching the ball and really has made a lot of big plays, not only in spring practice, but in fall camp. And then Leonte Carew, uh, he seems to come. I think that's part of Gary's problem. He loves the kid. I guess they went to school together. And he could have four guys on him, and Gary will throw it to him. And Leonte usually comes up with That's the problem, you know. Uh, so, uh, and then with uh, Tyler Croft, I think you got another guy. So you got you got some skilled players plus the running backs, you know. That we got to try to find a way to get the ball to these guys and and um, and, and still have a running game too, you know. I, I think, you know, I, I want to be balanced and and run the pass, and um, not that when I say that I want to have the ability to. Uh, if you're going to take away the run, then I'm going to throw it. And if you want to take away the pass, then I want to be able to run it. So the, really, the defense is really going to dictate whether we're running or passing. Um, so, you know, what I'm hoping that is uh, we can stay healthy in the offensive line and really get better there and work and get better on our protections and and um, you know that that I think is a key to our team. Hey Ralph, uh, Dan Duggan from NJ.com. I'm uh, just curious, what's it been like to get back into recruiting and just how big a role have you played in that? I've played not as big a role as some of the other coaches. Uh, I recruit mostly the quarterbacks. I did go out during spring uh, recruiting um, and watch some of those kids. Uh, I do visit with them when they come here, and I enjoy that very much. Um, but, uh, you know, Coach Flood's kind of taken some, some pity on an old man and has not really involved me as, as, as much as uh, he could, let's put it that way. And I'm very appreciative of that. Ralph, it's still a long ways away, but uh, what do you think the emotions will be like in returning to Maryland at the end of the season? Uh, that's the last game of the year. Ask me that question that week, because I'm worried about Washington State right now. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. Good afternoon. Camp's off to a great start for us. You know, defensively, the guys are working hard right now. Very pleased with their effort. Very pleased with their attitude, um, and you know we've seen great growth since practice one, and expect to see that continuing. I will say already, yes, I've trimmed the beard. Facial hair policy was in effect for today because we went to church, uh, so I had to adhere to that so we can get that one out of the way. All right. Um, Patrick for uh, JCTV. They say you have, you have the toughest job in the Big Ten because you have to face some people that uh, physically are in a different position for years that you've never faced before. Sure. Um, talk about that process. Well, a couple things. Number one, you know, you talk about the physicalness of the league, and, and that goes without saying. 
you know, I, I would say if you look at us over the years, we've been pretty good at stopping the run, you know, being in the top five uh, multiple times over the, the last couple of years. So I think that's something that we've done well. Um, so, you know, looking forward to the challenge, and I understand that we're going to see a little bit bigger, a little bit more physical O-line, but we like to think that we'll be able to handle the challenge. And, you know, going against a pro-style offense day in and day out uh, in the run game that we see and having to defend the fullback, you know, I think that's going to prepare us. Joe, since, uh, you know, taking over the job on an interim basis last year, what are the biggest changes that you've made to this system? And also, are there any freshmen that you're excited about right now? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the system is a system that's been in place, a system that I came in and worked under for two years, a system that I've seen been very successful. Um, so, you know, the, the, the blueprint is there. So we, we followed the blueprint. Now, there are some things that we need to, you know, change and, and, and alter. I think you always got to look at what your players do well and try to play to those strengths and then look at maybe some things that they don't do well and try to avoid putting them in those situations. So... You'll get a chance to see, you know, what our thoughts are as the season, you know, unfolds. And then, as far as freshmen are concerned, you know, I'm very excited about the group in general. You know, we'll get an opportunity to put them in the stadium and see them scrimmage. You know, that always kind of changes things. In my uh, years in coaching, I've always kind of seen that when you get into the scrimmages in camp, you'll see some freshmen who maybe hadn't flashed during practice, but when it's kind of go time, they flash. And then maybe in some instances, guys who had done a good job when it was thud and wasn't you know full go, it'll kind of take a step back. So we'll get a chance to evaluate that tomorrow and continue through the rest of the camp. Joe, you kind of touched on it uh, in the previous question, but in terms of game planning, you guys are playing, I think, 12 brand new opponents this sure. year. How does that kind of add to the challenge, considering you've never seen the personnel, never seen them at all? Well, it is a challenge. You know, you just need to manage your time. You know, we, we've been through all of our opponents and have initial thoughts on them from spring practice. You know, on we were able to handle it during recruiting. Uh, and we've got a plan in place to get all the things implemented. But I'd also like to think of it as a flip side, too. We've got 12 teams who haven't seen us before either and have to prepare for the things that we do. And, um, you know, give us a little bit of advantage from that standpoint. Joe, you told the uh, Big Ten Network that your defense will have both 4-3 and 3-4 elements. How much do you think your um, experience as a college defensive lineman will shape that? Well, you know, I, I think all that does is, 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 is make me, you know, have a little bit better idea up front. You know, I, I started off coaching on the defensive line. You know, I played the defensive line, so you know I really like and enjoy working with defensive linemen. But Coach Panagos does an outstanding job with those guys. So you know, I, I just think it's just whenever you can put yourself in a player's mind and you've been there and you've played it, it gives you a little bit better idea of what they're seeing, what they're expecting. So. And uh, secondly, how many of your players do you think know that you were a college defensive lineman? I I, I have no idea. <laughs> How much, when you're putting together your defense after last season, how much had to deal with mentally just getting them past last season before well, you put stuff in? Yeah, I, I think when you look at it, the, the bowl game, when we went into the bowl game, we were looking at that as, as a one-game season. And when we prepared for that game, I thought we had great attitude and effort, and we prepared very well for that game. And we went out and we played hard. So after that game was over, it was, it was on to 2014. And I think the experience of the bull prep kind of helped them turn the page. And then moving on to this season with uh, new players, some new coaches on the staff, new opponents, we were able to pretty easily flip it and, and move on. Well, it was good, you know, it was good just to, to get an opportunity to step away. Uh, you know, from some of the, the responsibilities I had, although in the in the in the bowl game I, I still was involved with the special teams, uh, but get back into the defense. So it was good just in terms of getting me in that mindset again. But you know, then you have the off season, you have the spring. You know, when you kind of jump onto it, I've been a coordinator at two different times in my career, Division three level, one double A level. So it isn't the first time that I've done it. Different stadiums, different people, bigger people, faster people, but still you're doing the same things. So, coach. Uh, Rutgers has a good reputation of being a school developing uh, D-backs. Are you starting to see the next level of D-backs starting to develop in your program? 
Yeah, I think so. You know, the guys that, that we put out there last year as freshmen who were playing as true freshmen, you know, the, the Chaffees, the Barnwells, the Stevensons, you know, they, you know, got a lot of great experience um, in game situations, and that's only going to benefit them moving forward. Um, they're still early in their progression, though. You know, we think back to the McCordys and, and the Ryans and the Coopers and the Harmons. You know, those guys played a lot of football and, you know, and were starters for multiple years. And, you know, we kind of remember the, the end of the road. There was a process to, to get them to that point. And, you know, we working real hard with those young guys, and we've seen great things from them in training camp and are expecting to see big things from them this season. Coach, and following it up, uh, most schools, uh, major schools, bring guys back to work with players. Yeah. Has that worked work with you guys? In, with regards to coming guys, back and helping? Guys going on to pros and come back to help you guys out. Well, at Rutgers, I mean, we always have guys that come back to practice, to spring practice, to spring games. And, we, you know, they always share, you know, some wisdom, some things that they've experienced. Maybe it's at the next level or things looking back and seeing, you know, they appreciate you know, now that they're a different time in their life. So absolutely, anytime those guys get an opportunity to get around our guys, I think it's awesome because they have instant credibility, you know, because they're where our players want to be. And so I think it's awesome, and, and, and we embrace that. No doubt. No doubt. Joe, Ryan Dunleavy from the Asbury Park Press. Could you talk about what went into the, from your angle, what went into switching Snyder and Longa's positions, and Longa specifically, what you see from him on the outside that makes you think that's the right spot for him? Well, you know, the thing about Steven last year is he obviously made a lot of plays, a lot of tackles, TFL sacks, and he's been a very productive player for us. And so then you look at Snyder, who's a little bit of a bigger guy. Um, Snyder is, is, is one of, if not the, the smartest player that we have on our defense. And so, you know, the two positions, when you look at them, you know, they liken themselves to, to those guys where they are now. And so Snyder being the guy that, you know, sets the fronts and, and makes a lot of the checks, uh, Steven being at the will position uh, who has an opportunity to play out in space and, and, and get involved in a playmaking role. Um, and the second part of the question, you know, I've been very pleased with Longa in training camp. He's, he's had a great start. Uh, he's grown a lot. Coach Frazier's done a great job progressing him. Um, and he's, he's taken steps forward even from spring practice. So we're very excited with where he's at. Joe, obviously your career has followed the same path as Rob Smith, a lot of the stops along the way. I'm just curious what uh, his impact has been on you. You know, we were, we were players together. He was a fifth-year senior when I was a freshman. So there was that portion of it. Um, you know, and then there was the portion of when we started coaching together. So it, it, it's, been, it's been great. You know, he's been a guy that has, has helped me along the way. Uh, he's been a guy that's given me opportunities along the way. Because being a Division three guy, and if you want to move up, you got to get an opportunity. And uh, he, he's helped me with that. So that's probably where, you know, it's been the most influential. You know, we're still close and talk on a regular basis. So, When you look at the pass yards given up last year, how much does it benefit this defense to play Big Ten conference rather than the Fresno State and SMU style of offenses? Well, it, there is a little bit different of attack. But... If you're not able to defend the pass in 2014, regardless of what league you're in, you're going to see it and you're going to get attacked. It may not be, you know, in four wides, five wides. It may be 11 personnel play action verticals down the field. So, you know, we're not thinking of it in those terms. You know, we identified that as something we need to improve at. We have. We still need to improve. And, and we're working towards, you know, having a, a great opener against a team that's going to sling it around. Joe. What have you seen from the secondary in training camp and particularly Dre Boggs? Uh, the secondary has done a good job of communicating. And they've done a good job of getting aligned, getting their assignments. Um, so I'm pleased with that. So. If you don't have that, you, you're going to struggle with pass protection. And so I'm pleased that we have that foundation. Now, the rest of camp, what we're looking to do is continue to make plays on balls, continue to be more aggressive, and continue to really just get better. Um, out of Dre, I, I think he's had a, a great start. Um, he's flashed in, in a lot of the drills that we've done. And so we're going to get an opportunity tomorrow to see him in the stadium in a live situation and, and evaluate him and uh, see how he does. 
Joe, we won't get a chance to talk to you again. So just what are your first impressions of the Washington State offense? And then just how much are you guys looking at that as a test, obviously based on you know a lot of the questions coming from last year? They're very good. Um, they have very good receivers. Quarterback's a great player. Um, you know, when you, when you talk about throwing the ball around in the air raid offense, Coach Leach, the, no one does it better than him. Um, so it's going to be a tremendous challenge. We have trem tremendous amount of respect for them and their program and what they've done and what C Coach Leach has accomplished in his career. And, um, but as far as getting ready for that first game, I'm excited for it because it gives us an opportunity to put to rest some of the things uh, the, the, and some of the questions. Um, but it's, it's a long process because it's not where you are game one, it's where you are at the game 12 and then hopefully getting an opportunity to move on to 13. So, you know, as Coach Friesian and I came in to hear him at the end, you know, a mark of a good football team is a team that can improve from the beginning to the end. And those are the ones that, that are, have opportunities to win championships. Um, teams that, that peak or teams that don't improve during the year, those are the teams that don't. So uh, it's a great challenge and a, and a great attention getter for our, ply, our players, but Win or lose after that first game, we're moving on to game two. So. Thanks, Joe. Uh,